Hey guys, Pixel here. So, look, my situation is this. I've been using one of these cheap HDMI capture cards. I should have been using two. This one's broken. Um, to capture footage, both from a Steam Deck that I'll be making a review on shortly, and also the 2008 HP Retro Gaming Laptop, which I've made a review on. Uh, check that out if you'd like to. It's a pretty cool machine. Anyway, I've been using this capture card to capture footage from both machines, and it's really not great for multiple reasons. I mean, it is cheap. This only costs about a fiver off eBay, but... It can only do 1080p at 30fps or 720p at 60 Now the fact it can only do 60fps at 720p isn't inherently a bad issue since both the HP and the Steam Deck play games best at 720p. The issue is that the 720p capture from this capture card looks terrible. It's simultaneously blurry and over sharpened and I've found the colors to be completely off. They're very um, like oversaturated. So this wasn't ideal, also the latency from this capture card is pretty bad, it's about half second latency. It's just about playable with like racing games, you can reprogram your mind to like take the turns earlier and stuff like that, but for competitive games it's an absolute no-go. So I've been looking for solutions on getting a better capture card for cheap, since you know, ones from Razer or Ava Media, they still cost hundreds and hundreds of pounds, and I can't justify spending that much money. So I went on Amazon trying to find a legit um, 1080p60 capture card, since there's quite a lot of them for like 15, 20 pounds. The issue is they'll claim they can do, for example, 4K, but it's actually just a 4K pass through, or the fact that they can accept a 4K signal. But inherently, inside the, the actual capture card, it's the same thing as this it's just a 1080p30 um, chip. So I didn't want to really go down that avenue, so I managed to find one that claims that I can do real 4K. This is the EasyCap Game Link RAW. Now this only cost me um, £40, which is, an, again, if it's true, if it's actually 4K, that's an incredible value. Now interestingly enough, nowhere in the listing does it claim it's an EasyCap, only in the picture. And in fact, um, if you search up the like this name on Google, it doesn't come with the same capture card. So I think this is just a generic one that they rebrand as EasyCap. EasyCap is an interesting brand. Um, if you guys have ever tried, you know, recording footage off of your Xbox 360 or PS3 back in the day, um, you know, again, capture cards that did HDMI, um, that did like 1080p, they would cost, again, hundreds of pounds. EasyCap was basically what these are, but back in the day, they would only do composite, you know, so the quality wasn't great and they would overheat really quickly, so, about, you know, you could get about an hour out of an EasyCap before it would overheat. But the thing is, there were so many clones made, you never knew what sort of a capture card you are getting because it would say easy cap on it. Chances are it wasn't an easy cap, it was a fake and again, overheated really quickly. So I think whoever's manufacturing these just put the easy cap name since it looks like it's just a sort of a generic name. Anyway, that's not the important part. The important part is, it claims that I can do a recording resolution of 4K at 30fps. 1080p at 120fps and 1440p at 60fps. That's incredibly versatile. I love these ones on Amazon, they seem a little bit fishy, so I got this one because it seems like it's the most legit one. I mean, it uses USB 3.0, which, which you do need for 4K because USB 2.0 just doesn't have the, um, the bandwidth. It is only HDMI 1.4, but like I showed in the review of my ASUS Vivo book, you can actually do 4K through HDMI 1.4. I don't know why it's this sort of common misconception that you can't. I was even doing it through a really good color space, not like the, the crappy, really compressed one. It's a very tiny little thing. It weighs absolutely nothing. Kind of cheap plastic. And this is a light. Um, you've got a microphone in, you've got headphones in, and I think that's uh, audio out as well. And on the back, you have HDMI out, HDMI in, and USB Type-C input, which is great. Cable that you get with it is USB-C to USB Type-A, but if you're, say, using it with a MacBook, they do give you a little USB-A to USB-C adapter, which is very nice. And also a link to an EasyCap Link software, although no one's going to use that, you're just going to use it through OBS instead. So, let me show you some of the footage and show you what I found. So here's the most basic test, here's 1080p60, I'm playing um, Geometry Wars 2, which is a native 1080p60 title on the 360, one of the only games that is 1080p on that console, but I'm playing it through the Series S on the backwards compatibility, and the reason I'm trying out this game is to test the latency, because this is quite a fast-paced game and I had no difficulties playing with it, well, mostly no difficulties. Um, there is still a bit of latency, it's sort of the equivalent of playing games maybe on your TV, you know, on a, like a, like one of the more old school TVs that don't have sort of zero latency, like variable refresh rate, you know, all that jazz. Um, so it's definitely playable, it's obviously you wouldn't want to play like competitive games this way, but it's more than usable, and of course you do still have that pass-through, and the quality is perfectly fine, it looks great, I have no issues with it. 
I did try to do 4K on the Xbox, but it was just projecting it. The Xbox would see the 4K, it would ask me if I want to keep the resolution, and as soon as I press keep, it'd go back to 1080p. I'm not sure if it's a glitch with the, with the Xbox, if it's a HDMI issue, but I end up having to use my laptop. I connected it through HDMI, then to the EasyCap, then back to the laptop, a bit of a convoluted solution, but there it is, there's my desktop in 4K. It looks once again very sharp, it doesn't look like it's being downscaled to 1080p or anything like that, it looks like a native 4K output, which is fantastic. And here's me trying out 1440p on the Xbox, it accepted that just fine. Unfortunately, I couldn't try out any games because all of them need updates, even my controller does. Um, and I don't think I have any 1440p games on the Xbox. Um, Card was probably the closest thing. I don't have Dirt 5 or like Super Hot Mind Control installed. But the whole point is it's fantastic that I can do 1440p 60 because it's a great middle ground between a resolution and frame rate. Um, I wouldn't want to go above that anyway because I don't have anything that can do 4K 60 anyway. Um, the Xbox can barely do 1440p as is. But it's great to see that. And I did also try the pass through and with this little iPhone footage, sorry about the, the, the flicker of the displays, but you can see that it does seem to be a zero latency pass through because when I move um, between games, you can see that my TV comes up first and then the OBS footage comes up second. And you can see the latency is actually not bad. It's only a couple of frames of latency. So that's awesome. And when doing the pass-through, it does seem to be like a true pass-through in the sense that with my 1080p TV, I can't select 4K, like I can't capture 4K footage and then have it downscaled to 1080p on my TV. And here is me capturing footage of the Steam Deck. And this is tw um, 720p, 60fps. And this is where the quality kind of goes downhill. It's nowhere near as bad as the £5 HDMI capture card, but it's, um, it is it is a little bit fuzzy. and. I think the deck can actually upscale from 720p to 1080p through HDMI, thankfully. Um, so I can overcome that issue. But to be honest, this is probably the best you're gonna get out of 720p anyway, um, especially when you're you're probably watching this video on a 4K TV anyway. So here's the thing that I wasn't expecting with this capture card. It can go below 720p. Here I am capturing fudge from the PS2. This is just using one of these cheap HDMI adapters. It works just fine. That's insane. I had no idea it can go below 720p. That makes it so much more versatile and it really helps out a ton as well. So that's amazing to see. Overall, as a sort of final conclusion, I am incredibly happy with this capture card. The fact that it was only £40 when the competition is £80 plus, I've had no issues with it whatsoever. Of course, time will tell, maybe it will overheat just like the original um, Easy Caps. And no, at the moment, I'm extremely pleased with this device. So that's all I have to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.